Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love every Saturday. Now, we are reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now, before I get started, I just want to start in with we are in the last days. And some of you who have only been used a little are going to start to be used a lot. Some of you who haven't been used by God at all, if you position yourself, you will begin to be used by God. But he wants to use clean vessels. Now, there are people out there that started out clean, and after a while, they let a little stuff build up. And before you know it, they're living a double life, speaking with forked tongue, one foot headed to heaven, the other foot sliding into hell. So what we want to do is we want to challenge ourselves to always be at the ready to be used by God. We want to be clean vessels, vessels of honor for him. And we don't want God to bypass us because we have bypassed a holy life. We don't want him to bypass us because we have passed him up to feed our flesh in any way, shape, or form. So let's go on and read now, starting at verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Now, before I go any further on that, we have to remember that the book of Revelation, the prophetic book of the whole Bible, shows us that there will come a time when the Antichrist will rise up out of the sea which means he will rise up out of the people of that region. When you look at the false prophet and you see how he will rise up out of the earth. In other words, he's also rising up out of people, but he's coming out of a out of dirt, so to speak. So these are not the two that you should follow, but what it shows is that they are the ones that will say peace and safety. They are the ones that will make you feel at ease, that will make you feel like, oh, we finally have somebody that's going to rescue us from all this turmoil. Not so. Don't believe it if you're here during the tribulation. Do not believe it. I just had to throw that in for a minute. But now let's continue reading this. Verse 4. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. You want to know some examples of sleeping, y'all? Some examples of sleeping. Let me name a few. Being so caught up in your cell phone, you're not even looking where you're walking. You're so mesmerized by that cell phone. When it rings, when somebody texts you, texting others, texting and driving, texting at the dinner table, texting, texting, texting. You can't even look up and enjoy the company of the people you're with because your face is so buried in that cell phone. Now, Imagine how crazy that looks and imagine how that makes God feel when he's trying to get your attention, when he's trying to get you to spend time with him, when he's trying to get you to open your ear, your heart, your spirit to what he wants to say to you, but you're so caught up in that cell phone, you can't hear him at all. You're not even interested in him at all because your cell phone is your source that's the way you treat it your cell phone is your all in all the center of your universe isn't that sad you see a family sitting around at a dinner table at a beautiful restaurant 
Where are their faces buried? Five or six of them sitting around the table, every single one of them buried in a cell phone. What is that, y'all? Do you recognize it for what it is? It is a trick of the enemy to lull you to sleep. Think about it. Moving right along. Seven. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus. All right, now some of you may look at it and I'm not going to interpret it. I'm going to let the Lord do that. Some, there's a divide there. Some may believe that we're not appointed unto wrath, so we're not going into the tribulation. Some may believe we're not appointed unto wrath, which means we go through the tribulation, but on the second advent of Christ, we won't go through him judging us. We won't have to go to the great white throne judgment. You believe what you want to believe. I'm not going to tell you what to believe. I know what I believe. But the bottom line is, and I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to influence you. You get that from God. Some things we got to start getting from God. We keep leaning on people all the time to get all our answers. God is your answer, baby. His answer is in his word. And you need to get in the habit of reading his word. And the answers are right there. Even to a lot of major decisions you have to make in life. His answers are right there. Some of you just turn a deaf eye, a deaf, I mean a blind eye and a deaf ear. All right, here we go. Huh, <sighs> eight. Let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, all right, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them that labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Don't laugh with them. Don't wink at it. That's Pat's two cents. Don't toy around and joke about it. Don't sweep it under the carpet like it ain't happening. Warn them that are unruly. And then for those that you don't want to be bothered with because you know their elevator doesn't make it all the way to the top, God has an answer for that too. Comfort the feeble-minded. Don't reject them. Don't ostracize them. Don't avoid them so you don't get embarrassed. Comfort the feeble-minded. Sometimes that's all you can do. You can't even engage in too much conversation because it'll go south or it'll go out in the stratosphere. So the best you can do with some people is comfort them. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. That means within the body of Christ and without the body of Christ. 16. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. <clears throat> That's something that we don't do much, do we? In everything, Give thanks, not for everything, in everything. If you're in a battle, if you're in friction, if you're in the middle of a precarious situation, if you're in a questionable uh, condition in your life, if you're in a sad, mournful, whatever, 
time in your life, whatever season you're in, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophet signs. Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Listen, y'all, listen. Now, I'm going to get on that real quick. Some of you do some things with folks that you don't need to be doing. If you have friends of the opposite sex, I don't care if they're old enough to be your granddaddy, your grandmama, or young enough to be your granddaughter or grandson. You be careful about being caught alone with them too much. You may mean no harm, but scuttlebutt can get around real fast. And rumors can get started. The rumors may have no foundation whatsoever. But that doesn't stop them from rolling right on down the road from grapevine to grapevine. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. So what does that mean? I'm giving you a little wisdom here from an old broad. Who knows? Don't hang out with folks of the opposite sex way out in the wee hours of the night. Don't be in their house alone. Don't have them in your house alone. When you are with the opposite sex, you have other people with you. Be careful about that. You have, see, when you cover yourself like that, because it's called wisdom, you cover yourself with the blanket of wisdom, and nobody can tell a lie on you. Nobody can breathe a false accusation. See, you have to remember, men and women are funny. I'm going to share a quick story. When I used to work at RTD, that's the uh, Rapid Transit District driving the city bus, this guy had a crush on me. I didn't have a crush on him. He was a nice guy. I liked him. I thought he was so cool. He was so funny. He had the greatest sense of humor. We were clown, clown, clown. Banter. Constantly bantering back and forth. I had no clue. And one day he asked me if he could, you know, date me. And I, I, I had to sweetly say, uh, I thought we were just friends. So from that day on, he never spoke to me. He never said a mumbling word. Now, had I been hanging out with him individually with just him and me, and he was mad at me for turning him down. Can you imagine the amount of lies he could have mounted up on me? Thank God all the bantering was always done in public around other drivers. We were never alone, just him and me. But imagine how that could have turned ugly. There are times when women will tell lies on a man. All kind of lies. Women have gotten men arrested. Why? Because the man wasn't thinking the same way the woman was. So now the woman is scorned. She's embarrassed. She's offended. She's rejected. And she's going to make you pay. And the lies start flying from left to right. Be careful with that. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Everything you do could be totally God-founded, and that's fine. But use wisdom with your anointing. All right. And the reason I say that is because one thing I make sure I don't do, I don't have men hanging out in my house. I don't hang out at a man's house. Now, I know I'm 71 years old, so ain't nobody looking at me. I get that. But you'd be surprised the stuff old folks get caught up in. And some of y'all old folks need to curtail some of your socializing because it's giving a certain appearance that you may not even have any involvement in. But you have to be careful. 
you know, one or two hours, you, you, you know, sitting around playing this or playing cards or whatever, no big deal. But it should not be over and over and over and over and over again. And the reason for that is because it starts looking over time. It starts looking like it's something other than what it is. All right. 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. Something's coming to my mind. So I guess I'm supposed to stay on this a little while longer. Years ago, I was being counseled by a pastor. The pastor was male. And of course, you know, I am female. All right. So for some of you who have doubts, you know, that's on you. But I know who I am and I ain't trying to be nothing else but what God made me. Uh -uh. Anyway, so here we were in the office. It was about seven, eight o'clock at night. It was dark outside. And the only people in that whole church was him and me. And he was counseling me. It was a God thing. The man is a married man. Here I was, a married woman. He was counseling me, dealing with my marriage at my first marriage. That was my ex-husband was constantly committing adultery. But as we were talking about our issues, he used wisdom. And see, men and women can get stirred up from the craziest things. And here I was honestly talking about the lack of activity in our marriage, you know what I mean? So talking about that subject, he, when he said what he said, I knew he was playing it safe because his flesh was starting to rear its ugly head. So he said, Patty, go home. Come on, let me walk you to the car. Go home. And it wasn't out of being rude. It was because he was in an office alone with a female who was talking about the lack of activity happening in her marriage. And here he is. He's probably getting a little stirred up thinking about the activity. You get my drip. So sometimes you have to cut things short in order to avoid from something going where it should not have gone. There were... But there are men out there who have secretaries and they spend too much time late nights. The secretary starts getting a crush on the man and the man is faithful to his wife. He wants to get home and be with his wife, but he's been spending too many hours alone before you know it. Something happens. Oh, where did that come from? Adultery. Boom. Just like that. Oh, no. Because they didn't have the wisdom to say, go home. They didn't have the wisdom to say, okay, let's, let's continue this tomorrow. It's getting too late. That, see, some of you want to get on pastors' cases. You want to get on cases of people of the clergy because they fall sexually. They fall into temptation. But you have to remember, they are no more holy than you and I. They are no more, uh, th their flesh is no less tainted than yours and mine. So you have to remember that no matter who you are, no matter what your position, whether you are a minister, or a youth pastor, oh, that can be dangerous, y'all. Whether you are, because I'm telling you, nowadays people are so brazen. These little girls and these little guys will come on to you like, hey, hey, hey. And you're like, wait, no, 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 no. This is a God thing. But it doesn't mean your flesh will not react. It doesn't mean your flesh will not respond. So you have to be careful about it. I don't want to, I don't want to beat that dead horse. Just as a point of precautionary measure, watch the hours. Watch what time of day. Watch what the setting is. Are you alone with this person? Be careful with that stuff. Whether it's male on male, female on female, male on female, female on male, whatever it is, be careful. Because if it goes on too long and too often, 
It's going to happen from time to time, yeah. But if it starts to become a habitual thing, you better back up off of that because it could be starting to take a turn and it'll catch you on your blind side. And before you know it, whoops, whoops, there it is. I said, whoops, there it is. Be careful. Just cautioning you guys. Then, And you look at a lot of these pastors with these big churches, these mega churches, and you get turned off to them because they fell. Guess what? That fall was happening long before the act occurred because they were not using wisdom. It didn't mean they were not any more, uh, any less sincere than you are, any less sincere than I am. But the right setting, the right timing, the right hormonal activity, and boom! Oh, crap! What just happened? Be careful. Use wisdom. And don't be so quick to judge those that have fallen. They just didn't use wisdom. You hear me? All right. So, abstain from all appearance of evil. Now, let me read on, and I'm going to finish. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that call, that calleth you, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Now, I'm going to stop there right there, because what I want you to think about is God is preparing us for service. And we have to remember that we are the ones in these last days, not our grandpappies, not our, our, our great, great grand uncles. No, we are here in these last days. There's a reason for the fact that God had you born in such a time as this. So whether you're in your 20s, your teens, whether you are 10, whether you are 70 or 90, as long as you can breathe in, move your hands, move your mouth, do anything with your body, whether you write letters, whether you make calls, whether you have prayer vigils, whether you have church services, Bible study, whether you do YouTube channels, whatever you can find yourself to do, do it. Do it. Serve God in every possible way you can. Because as Jesus said out of his own mouth, the harvest is white, but the laborers are few. You hear me? Don't be one of those that are not laborers. Become a laborer for Christ. Start asking him, what can you do for him? Start asking him that. And do it with all your might. Do it in love. Not to get recognition. Not so you can get a plaque. Not so they can clap for you. Some, I'm um, not, okay, I got, I, I got to go there just for a minute. Allow me, you guys, listen. I see people in the body of Christ that do this. And you have to be careful. Sometimes, as individuals, Many do not realize that they have what is called the spirit of Jezebel. Now, before we get real deep into that one, I want to introduce you to my new book that I wrote after I got my doctorate in eschatological studies, a dramatic paraphrase commentary on the book of Revelation and end times prophecy. Check it out. Back to the message. I have no idea where this message is going. I just know what it's about. So it can take some turns that I didn't expect. This is one of them. And as a result, you will find yourself, especially if, if, if you've got that spirit of Jezebel, you will find yourself looking for stuff to head up, head up, head up. You got to be the leader. I'm saying it in colloquial terms extreme colloquial terms. You got to be the leader. You got to have people obeying your orders, doing what you want to do, how you want to do it, when you want to do it, because you be the leader. Now, it may not be that God called you to do any of that, but 
Here's the part you have to be cautious of. Sometimes that pride that also comes from a, a mound of insecurities needs to be stroked. And one of the ways your pride can be stroked is if you are the leader of something. And if you are the leader of something, and people are looking to you for direction, and people are obeying your orders and marching to your tune, it makes you feel like, yeah, that's right, I'm a, I'm a servant of the Most High King by Cracky. Yeah, I be somebody. That's right. Y'all better listen to me. I'm a child of God. I, you, I'll hear from God and I'll get you straight. Be careful with that, baby. You do not want God to sit you on your fanny and get you straight. So a good thing to ask God before you take on any leadership is, Lord, am I doing this out of my pride in my flesh? Or am I really doing it out of my willingness to serve you? Now, if you're willing to serve God and you're doing whatever you do, you don't care if you get recognition or not. You're not competing with your brothers and sisters. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. The same way you hear men, this, this this is a good example of that. We don't always realize we're doing it. <clears throat> the way you hear men when they're talking about being in the war or or growing up and going through a lot of fights, and it's really comical to watch them. It, it's like a, a um, I, I can't use that expression. I got to be ladylike, but it's like a testosterone con contest. It's the word starts with a P, but I'm trying to be nice. So you get my drip. Okay. So you got these men sitting around and they're playing cars or they're playing a, 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 a dominoes, they're playing bones, whatever. And they're, they're talking, oh yeah, I remember when, when I, I was shot in, in the war and they did this. And yeah, let's see your scar. Look at this, look at this scar right here. And somebody says, oh, that ain't nothing. Look at my scar. They cut me from the navel all the way around my back because this happened and that. And before you know it, you got a competition. Everybody's trying to outdo the next one with their war stories. And you've got competition. Everybody's trying to top the next one, the next one, the next one. Now, somebody who doesn't need all that attention might have had more experience than all of them. And they don't even bother sharing it because they're like, I don't want to steal your thunder. Go on and enjoy your stage. I will not upstage you. I'll leave that alone. Because they don't need that attention. They don't need the recognition. They don't need the applause. Wow. They don't need it. So we have to be careful. Sometimes we do things because we need the recognition. Why? We need the applause. Why? See, that pride thing is very subtle as well. So, okay, moving right along. <laughs> so we need wisdom. We need humility. All right. When we are planning on serving God. And we need truth. There are things that you must ask God about yourself in order to learn more about you. I can tell you things God has told me about me that I was shocked. I, I was shocked. I'm looking at a fool in a dream and I'm wondering what's wrong with this chick. And when I wake up, I'm upset because I, I wanted to slap some sense into her. How could she be so stupid? And I ask God, why would you give me a dream like that? And what does God say? That is you. Now, I would not have known that had I not asked God a question. Get in the habit of asking God questions. Yes, it was embarrassing. Yes, I was ashamed when God said that is you. Because no, I didn't have a clue that I looked that bad in God's eyes. That I looked that stupid in God's eyes. And God was trying to get me to get off the ground and quit groveling for somebody's love. That's what God was telling me to stop doing. The only love I needed to reach out for was God's love. 
not human beings. When you realize that God is truly your source and you start acting as such, you find you're not doing so many desperate things trying to get people's recognition, trying to get people to give you credit for this or give you credit for that or, oh, anyway. So be careful about that because some of you needing, you know, with that pride thing, needing to be uh, in charge of this or in charge of that, you're a self-appointed, whatever you want to call it. You're actually a self-appointed Jezebel. So you have to be careful with that because that is not the kind of leader God is looking for. So he looks, he's looking for someone with wisdom, with humility. And whatever you do has to be out of love. You hear me? Out of love. You are not to get out there and become a guide to the blind. Now, for some of you who don't know what that means, that's like, you know, look at all God did with me. You know, I'm going to help you get your life straight. I'm going to help you get your business together. I'm a, I'm 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 gonna show you a thing or two about this word because obviously you don't know you don't have a clue. I you know God needs me to help straighten you out. Oh no, He does not. Woo! If you want to water a garden, you can get a jar with holes in it and fill it up with water pour it over that garden and water the garden. You may have a water hose sitting in your yard, but you don't have to have that water hose to water your garden. No more than God has to have you to do his work. So don't get high and mighty. Get up off that high horse because you are not all that in a bag of chips, baby cakes. All right. So, this, these are the last days. What is God going to do through you? Are you going to function out of the love for God, out of the love for people? Or are you functioning out of love for yourself? Hmm? What are you really doing this or that for? Ask God every once in a while, Lord, why am I really doing this? Lord, if there's something not right in me, would you show me? Do you ask God those questions? Because if you're going to be a leader, baby, you're going to have to get used to getting constructive criticism. And God will talk to you directly. He will talk to you through his word. And he will talk to you through friction and criticisms that other people have for you. That's the hardest one to deal with. Because if your pride is in the way, you're not going to want to hear it. You're going to see them as your enemy when God is using them to sharpen iron. What does the Bible say? Iron sharpens iron. Sometimes it's the criticism that will get you on the good foot. Sometimes it's someone telling you what you're doing is not its best. They have a better way that can make things easier for you, but you don't want to hear it because you don't want to change your ways. You know how, what they say about old dogs and new tricks. So God can be trying to show you a different way, an easier way, a nicer way, a better way, but you're not open to it because this is what you know and this is what you're going to stick to. Back cracky. All right. So understand that if you want to be used by God, you have to be humble. You have to use wisdom. You have to operate out of a pure heart full of love. And when God gets ready to use you, he's going to ready you. He's going to prepare you. Some of your preparation will come through friction. How do you handle friction? Some of your preparation will come through false accusations. How will you handle that? Some of your preparation will come from the lack of recognition totally. Everybody else getting the credit but you. How do you handle that? Are you, are you there for God's sake or are you there to be recognized? Hmm. <laughs> okay, I'm about done. But pray. The, the things you need to do 
is ask God to show you you. Show you what you need to adjust. I do it all the time. I, to this day, I constantly ask God, show me what I, he just corrected me last night. So the correction never ends as long as you're always asking. That's why he wants people with a tender, a humble and contrite heart. He can't deal with hard heartedness. He can't deal with hard headedness. He can't deal with stubbornness. He can't deal. He didn't have time to waste on that crap. You want your old wine? Go and have your own wine. He's got new wine. He'll just go on and find some new wine skins to put that new wine in. You go on and hang out with your old wine. It's all right. He'll move on to someone else. Never be too old to learn anything new. Don't be so locked into one method that you can't learn another. Never be so holy that you can't receive correction. Never be so smart that you can't receive someone's wisdom. All right. So do you want to be a leader? Do you want to be used by God in these last days? What are you going to do about it? Hmm? How are you going to handle your preparation period? Sometimes the preparation is way longer than the actual assignment. Now, that's the part that gets on my nerves. I tell you straight out. I've told the Lord that many times. Seems like I'm always being prepared. What am I being prepared for? Am I that much of a mess? Well, I guess so. All of us are. But when God is ready to use you, if you yield to his instruction, if you yield to the criticisms, if you sit back and don't get an attitude because you didn't get called on. And when you do get an attitude, which we do sometimes, take that attitude to God. He's the only one who can make the readjustment. Number one, ask him to forgive you for having an attitude. Number two, ask him to remove the attitude. And number three, ask him to heal you so you don't even have to suffer through those attitudes. And sometimes one of the ways he gets you over it is by having it happen over and over and over and over. And when it stops bothering you, that's probably when you're ready. <laughs> Ask me how I know. So give yourself to God. Yield to his ways. Receive instruction, receive criticism, receive whatever, and be ignored, be forgotten, be abandoned, be rejected. That comes with the package. Because as much as we want to know him in the power of his resurrection, we also have to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. Who was rejected? Jesus. Who was ignored? Jesus. Who did not get the credit? Jesus, all of the above, are you willing to go through that in order to be a useful vessel for God in these last days? I'm done. God bless you. I leave you with those questions and those challenges. Amen.